Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, both here um, at UCL and uh, online. Um, it's a real delight to have you here with us. My name is Eleanor Robson, and I'm the director of the Nahrain Network. Before we, I introduce our very distinguished speaker this evening, I'd like to say a few words about the network and about the scholarship program that's brought Dr. Hamid here to, um, to the UK. Uh, so the Nahrain Network, as I'm sure many of you know, um, is a big interdisciplinary research network based here at UCL um, and with partners at the British Museum, and at the Kurdistan Institute for uh, Strategic Studies and Research, and with universities across Iraq and the Ministry of Culture in Iraq. And since 2017, we have been supporting Iraqi-led research on the various ways in which history and heritage and related disciplines can contribute to improving life in Iraq, whether that's social or economic or cultural life, or increasingly now uh, climatic conditions that become increasingly important. So we were originally funded by the British government through the Global Challenges Research Fund, but since 2021, 20, uh, we have had very generous um, philanthropic funding that came to UCL that's allowed us to continue for another 10 years. So we're extraordinarily grateful to our donor for this. Now, since the beginning of our work, we have partnered with the British Institute for the Study of Iraq to run our visiting scholarship scheme, which is actually a much longer tradition at um, the uh, Institute. And this uh, scheme brings usually six scholars in different uh, disciplines related to our work to the UK every year for a period of up to two months to work on a research project with a university or a museum or some sort of cultural institute um, with a partner here in the UK. So sometimes that's big, part of a bigger, longer running project. Sometimes it's the start of a new uh, academic relationship. Sometimes it's just a self-contained exploration of meeting different partners. But if all the many people we have funded, and we have funded, I think, about 25, almost 30 uh, scholars over the years now, they have all gained a great deal of um, intellectual excitement, career development, new relationships, new ideas, new methods, uh, new data from these scholarships. And as I hope you can see from um, what I'm showing on the screen, our scheme is currently open for applications. Um, so if you are an Iraqi based in Iraq or Iraqi Kurdistan and want to apply, um, then please do. If you're UK based and are interested in hosting somebody fully paid by our uh, scholarship fund, then please do get in touch with us. And we will be very happy to, um, to talk to you uh, more about that. But do look on our website first. There's a lot of information about how the um, scholarships work. Now, British Institute for the Study of Iraq has a um, very close relationship with Basra, which is the uh, topic of our uh, lecture tonight. Um, and for a couple of years ago, merged with the, um, the Friends of Basra Museum, which is the Char British Charitable Foundation, uh, set up to, um, to support Basra Museum. And in fact, also, some of you, most of you in here probably don't know this, but in some senses, the uh, Nahrain network was born in Basra too. Um, so back in 2016, when I was um, chair of the British Institute for the Study of Iraq before Nahrain existed, and Paul, were you, de were you deputy chair? And I can't remember it so long ago. I think I might, have been. might have been. So Dr. Paul Collins, uh, now keeper of the Middle East Department at the British Museum, was deputy chair, and we co-organized a an international conference to celebrate the opening of Basra Museum. And we started to talk about what we would ideally do if we had a lot more money and um, without the, the, the constraints of working as a British charitable foundation. 
And then we were very fortunate that just a few months after that, the British government launched um, what became the Global Challenges Research Fund. So those first conversations in Basra that we had, Paul and I with Iraqi colleagues there, really led to the creation of, of the network. And I have to say, without that conference, I doubt that this, this whole thing um, would have existed. So it's really fitting tonight, actually, I think that we are talking about Basra. Um, I should also, oh, I also meant to say that the um, proceedings of that conference are available as an open access online publication, or you can buy a print copy, either um, in um, English, or if you prefer, in Arabic, um, and the, the BISI website um, has, has details of all that as I showed there. So I highly recommend that. And I have a copy which I will present to Dr. Hamid at the end. So this brings me on to Dr. Hamid. And it is a real pleasure um, to welcome you back to London. Uh, Dr. Hamid is, since 2020, has been the head of the uh, Department of Architecture at the University of Basra as part of the College of Engineering. He also has very strong British roots as well, um, because his PhD is um, from the University of uh, Salford in 2017. Um, so he was trained in architectural engineering at the University of Technology in Baghdad, um, but then came to Salford, came to the UK um, to study under Professor Claudia Trio uh, at the University of Salford, working on a PhD in urban design focused on um, the heritage buildings of Basra. This visiting scholarship, however, he is um, being held at a different UK university, at the University of Loughborough, and I'm delighted that his host, Dr. Sora Almaya, is here with us tonight from the School of Architecture, Building and Civil Engineering at the University of Loughborough. So it's been a really lovely way, I think, for Dr. Hamid to maintain his UK academic connections. That's something that a lot of our visiting scholars have found very helpful. So again, if you if you um, want to revive or, or develop new um, relationships in the UK, I do strongly encourage you to apply to us. So Dr. Hamid is, is a real expert in the uh, cultural heritage of Basra, and he's uh, particularly interested in traditional architectural forms as a way to protect against um, the climate emergency. I mean, Basra today, that's 50 degrees centigrade. It's absolutely unbearable. It's difficult for us here in London to imagine that on this cold and rainy day. Um, I think we've, yeah, neither is ideal, right? Um, and neither is going to get any better. So I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, Dr. Hamid's talk. I'm going to just um, share his slides so that he can start. Um, Here we are. Oops. And um, let me get back to the beginning. Sorry, we were just there. We are. So he's going to be talking um, to us this evening on safeguarding the diversity of cultural heritage in Basra. And let me just switch that off for folks. And so he's going to talk to us for a while. Um, after his lecture, he will take questions. Uh, if anyone has questions, either um, from Zoom or from here in the lecture um, hall, and then I will ask uh, Dr. Paul Collins to um, close the evening for us. And for those of us who are here, um, we've got some uh, some refreshments available, so if you want to stay and chat afterwards, you'd be very welcome to too. So with no, no further ado, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Hamid to give a lecture. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for your attendance today and the others on the Zoom. And I hope uh, this presentation will be interested for you. Uh, many thanks again for uh, Nahrain Network and uh, 
a big thanks for GC to give me this opportunity to be uh, here today and to present and talk about a very important uh, subject uh, and timely subject, which is related to the uh, heritage of Basra. I suppose most of you know about Basra. However, maybe the others are not. Therefore, I will start with a short brief about the history of the city of the Basra. Basra is the first city built by Muslim out of the Arabian Peninsula. That was in 14 AH. Built by the leaders of the Muslim at that time, Utba ibn Ghazwan. And he used it at that time for to be a camp for his army. It's the old Basra is located 18 kilometers at the west of the current city center of the Basra near the city or the town called Azubair now. This is an old map showing the division of the area of the land of the Basra city. And it represents that there is uh, some sectors according to the tribes at that time. So Tamim, uh, Bakr, Abdul Qais, and another, others. Basra is educational and intellectual center and its cultural sector. It's a city for poets and poetry. Al Marbad festival was holding every year in the Basra. And many of the poets, poets coming from other countries, from other cities to join this festival every year. And Basra and Kufa was the main school at the first age of the Islam. So it was the main centers for the whole world of Islam at that time, Basra school and Kufa school. And the remain from the old Basra is showing on these pictures, which as, as I said, is located near the city of Al Zubair. Thanks to its long history, Basra is rich with many heritage monuments and heritage places and heritage building. The most important one is the Basra Mosque, which is the first mosque built out of the Arabian Peninsula and third mosque built in the Islam after the Prophet Mosque in Medina and the uh, Mecca Mosque Kaaba. So it's the third one. It's built by Utba ibn Ghazwan, as, as, as I said before. Now it's called the Imam Ali Mosque, or called it Al Khutwa, Khutwat Ali. That's because the Imam Ali took it as a camp for his army on the, on the Al Patul, Kamal Patul, which has happened which that happened at 36 AH. And the remain from this uh, mosque, just the minaret now, and this picture showing the minaret during the time 1916 and 1935. And this is the, this is the current one. They built a new, new mosque now beside it. And this is the old one. And this is the new mosque built beside it. And because Imam Ali take it as a camp, so it's become very important for Muslims, especially for the Shia. And thousands of pilgrims coming to visit this building during uh, specific days on the, on the year, specific days on the occasion, Islamic occasion, especially in Muharram and Ramadan. And we can see the numbers of uh, the people coming to visit this uh, mosque.
during the Kamal battle, many of the Muslims, famous characters in Islam, killed uh, during this battle. And therefore, the area around this, this, the site of the battles was filled with by the graves and the shrine of, the, of these famous characters. The first one is Al Zubair ibn al Awam. The shrine of the Zubair ibn al Awam now is located, it's about uh, three kilometers from the, to the west of the, uh, of the mosque itself. Okay? And the city center of Al Zubair now is located. And this is pictures show uh, the shrine of the Zubair in 1960 and this one in 1980 or something like that. And this is the current one. And this is the shrine of Zubair. In addition to that Zubair, Utba ibn Ghazwan, who established the Basra, is the same shrine now. Others, Talha, Al Zubair ibn Awam, is the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad. Talha is the friend of the Prophet Muhammad, also killed in the battle of the the Kamal Battle, Al-Jamal, Ma'arakat Al-Jamal. His shrine located is about 500 to the east of the uh, mosque of uh, Basra. And this is the shrine of Talha. And because Basra is educational and uh, center during that, the first age of the Islam, there is many characters also at that time lived there and died there. And their shrine still existing nowadays. For example, Anas ibn Malik, who was the collective of the hadith of the Rasul, of the Prophet Muhammad. And his shrine is located is 10 kilometers to the north of Al Zubair city now. In addition to that, Al Hassan al Basri, famous characters in Islam. And he was a post or a chief of a group of Islam was called Al Mu'tazila. His shrine located at the city center of the Basra, just one kilometer from the shrine of the Zubair. And it has the shrine has a unique dome, which was the fairest dome built in this style. Then it's separate to all the other uh, countries or the world Muslim countries. Uh, Hassan al-Basri also, there is a symmetry around the, the shrine of al-Hassan al-Basri. The, the, the symmetry is the oldest one from one of the, of the oldest one on the Islam. And it's include many graves of the important characters in the Islam. This is the shrine of uh, the symmetry of al, the, the, the gate of the symmetry of the Hassan al Basri, and it's included inside it Al Farahidi, who was a famous character in, 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 in Arabic, like Islam, and poetry, and uh, Al Farazdaq, as well. Ibn al Haytham, who was a scientist of the vision, and he discovered the camera. Al Al-Jahl as well, Rabi al adawiya and Al-Sayyab. This is the shrine or the grave of the Sayyab, and this is the monument of the Sayyab. And others, many others all. In addition to the graves and shrines, there are many other heritage places and monuments in Basra city. For example, the Adam trees which is located 100 kilometers to the north of the city center of the Basra. And the story said, this is the tree from the Adam when he coming down from the heaven. Another story said is related to the Ibrahim or Abraham when he visit this area. So it's, it's also considered or become as a, a holy tree, tree in the Iraq and many people visit it every year. The another one is Ibn Jawzi, which is located in the Abu al-Khasib, south of the Basra city center. 
And Al Maqam, Maqam Ali, which is located at the city center 800 years ago, this mosque as well. And at the west of the Basra, this is Al Khan from Al Zubair, and uh, a part of the wall was around the city of the Zubair still existing. Now they is called Al Maktoul. Basra is the main, the second main city in Iraq after the capital Baghdad. It's located at the end south of the Iraq, on the on the head or the top of the Arabian Gulf. It's border with two countries, Iran from the east and Kuwait from the south, and a little bit with Saudi Arabia as well. These locations give Basra opportunity to be cross-pollination with other cultures. And that's why the people get a different culture in the Basra. Basra as well is the only seaport for Iraq. All the trades coming to Iraq shipping from coming from Basra. And there are five or six uh, ports in Basra. The largest one is in Qasr, located at the south of the city, southwest. And then Khor Zubair and Qasr were used for oil and, and goods as well. Uh, Khor Zubair was, uh, are used for the oil only, which is the second one. And the third one is Abu Flus, which is located at the Shat al Arab. This is actually Shat al-Arab, at the east south of the Shat al-Arab, okay? And Al-Ma'qal, the oldest one, which was established in 1925, Margil, gold, which is established by, by, by British army, and it's stopped now from uh, not working now. And two years ago, they start for the new one, it's called the... Uh, Fao Grand Port, which will be the largest one on the Middle East. Regarding to the economy, economic, Basra is considered the economic capital of the Iraq. That's because many reasons. First reason is the oil, 70 to 80 percent from the oil from the Iraq coming from Basra. And this is the oil industry. So it's oil industry, many fields in Basra for the oil at the West, for example, North Rumela, South Rumela, Bergesia, and Hamar Mishrif and so on. And at the North, West of Qurna and South of Qurna and Majnoon at the North East. And in addition to the oil, there are many factories in Basra and very many factories in Basra. For example, iron and steel factory in Khorizwer, uh, uh, petrochemical factory, uh, factory also in Khorizwer, okay, and uh, filterization can, can, uh, factory and paper factory in the north of Basra in Hartha, and also gas factory on the Zubair, in addition to the west corner industry of the oil. So it's a rich city. In addition to the economic and seaport, Basra is also an agricultural center. Basra is there, it was in 1970, was, was Basra have about 13 to 15 million date, uh, pound date. Now, the existing now between two to three million, unfortunately. And as you see, the difference between now and before. So you can see this is because many reasons, wars, and in addition to the uh, economic reasons, because many of the people, especially all these forest of the farm is private. So now it's, they demolished to build high rising or housing or something like that. And for that date, 
there's many kind of the date in Basra. And the best one is called Al-Barhi, which is the best one in the world. And it's specific for Basra because it's located on Basra. They try to plant it out of the Basra and it's okay growth, but not get the same tasting as the Basra one. In addition to the date, also Basra is the center for the product of tomatoes at the west of the Basra and the Zubair. During this time, during the last few centuries, Basra was under colonization. The first colonization was the Ottoman colonization, which is about 400 years, as you know. The colonization of Ottoman occupied all the Iraq, and there was three wilaya or three governor, Mosul and Baghdad and Basra. So during that time, uh, there is a few building built at that time, especially for the private building, and no public building built at that time, especially just for the governor, uh, palace, and so on. But this is the style of the building during the Ottoman uh, period, which is now represented the identity of the city of the Basra. So the landmark, this is the clock of the Sorin, which is demolished 30 years ago. Sorin clock, okay. And the canals and the rivers, okay. And the courtyard, which is a very distinguished features for all the traditional house in Basra city. All the traditional house has a courtyard. And this is for two reasons. The first reason is for the environment and the climate, because the climate in Basra is very harsh, harsh climate and very hot. So uh, uh, to get a comfortable environment or comfortable area, so they are get this courtyard and all the windows of the rooms open to its uh, enter to indoor uh, to the uh, courtyard. The second purpose for the courtyard is the social purpose, which is about privacy, because the family can be comfortable more with this area, because there is no open to the outside. And you can see the material used, the lifestyle, simple lifestyle, and the LA as well. There is no direct LA, no direct back in the Basra city and the old Basra city. The LA was twisting and winding. Uh, and this is to, to get a circulation of the wind. So the pedestrians will be comfortable when they walk on the side. And the LA was very narrow to get shadow from two sides. Uh, in addition to the Shanashil, which is the main features of Basra, is the icon of the Basra now, the Shanashil is a wooden balcony pitched out or like cantilever for between 50 centimeter to one meter out of the door and is provide sh shading for the pedestrians walking and on the, on the uh, LA. And also there is many elements, for example, this is the, the columns and this is the traditional uh, door. And as you see, the door has two door knocked, knocker, okay? Right and left, right for men, because men always right, and the left for women. So the people inside the house, when, the, and it has a different sound. So the family inside the house, when they knock on the right, they know there is a man. So the woman not allowed to open the door for them and the woman as well. The second colonization is the British. And uh, as you see from this pictures, the British army entered to Basra. It was in 23rd of November, 1940, 14, and the rising, the the flag of the British on the uh, Al-Qishla, which is the governor of the Ottoman time. 
And there is a many monument uh, from the British still existing in our day. And the first one, for example, of the sick, of the, the memory of the uh, soldier, British soldier killed during the war, the First World War, and their name still existing there. And uh, they established many public buildings, not just private. For example, the airport, the traditional airport called Shadrar now is using as a hotel. The modular school is still existing, is still working as uh, a modular school now in the city center. Landmark in the Margil, and the administration of the ports, which is still working uh, now. There's another samples from the houses, private houses for the rich people at that time and important and the uh, characters at the, the, for example, the house of the uh, Sheikh Khazal, who was the governor of the Basra and Arabistan in Iran altogether. And the house of an Naqib, which he was the first uh, home office minister on the 1921 on the first government kingdom. And uh, Uthman Wali, this is the house of the Uthman Wali, and the Bashayan house on the old Basra, all together, and as well Al Bassam house and Al Maldi Al Mandil house. Most of them uh, uh, important characters and famous characters for in the Basra history. The Venice of the East. Basra has many nicknames. The jewel of the gold, Al Basra Al Fayha, as they said. But the main one and the best one was the Venice of the East, which is holding in the mid of the uh, last century. That's because the similarity between Basra and Venice, as you see in this picture. So there was a similar because the canals, as you see in this map, there were about 300 rivers and canal in Basra. Nowadays, just seven rivers still existing nowadays. And there is call between time to time to land full some of them. So this is the old map showing the canals and, and this canals and this canals and river impact the air the planning of the city of the Basra. So the planning of the city of the Basra is different than other cities because it's according to the, uh, to the rivers and the canal, which is make sectors. And this canal was, was used for the many purpose, for the transportation and for the ventilation because it's uh, make the climate more comfortable and they uh, get a view on the rivers. Now we move to the diversity of the uh, environment. Mostly, the city is, has, has one natural environment. It's rare to find a different environment in one city. Maybe in the country is okay, but for the city, one city is different to find many different natural environment. For Basra, it has three different natural environment. At the, at the north, the marsh, the north of the city of Babasa, the marsh. And at the west, the desert, as Zubair. And the city center itself, it's the forest of palms and so on. And this natural environment, affecting the built environment, because it's get impact for the built, in, built environment itself. So the shaping the built environment according to the natural environment and the built environment shaping us. And because we are impact the character and the society live inside this built, built environment. As they say said, we created our city and then it's created us. I will talk about them. In details, Mars, 
you know, Mars, it's uh, recently, recently, just a few years ago, uh, listed on the World Heritage List. And you can see from this picture, the type of the neighborhood and how is the located the houses to give privacy for each house. So the doors, the orientation of the houses is not located to each others. And the passes and the LA between them, the, 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 the roads or something like that, how it's working now. So mostly it's the water, the most one. They work on the symbol work, they gathering reeds and leaves from the, uh, and the fishing also. And their life is very simple. This is traditional uh, bread or naan, they do it. It's called siyah, and we'll talk of. This is the school at that time, this is 1970, not now. And this is the sample of the, how they built their houses. They got read together and make it as a column. They tied it and make it as a column. And then they get a mat, wicker mats and cover it. And the women work as well beside the women at, the, at this area, working together the mat and fishing. This is the first environment on the Basra in the north. The second one is where is different, totally different, desert. There is no water there. They depend on the well to get water, okay? And you can see the LA, very narrow, very, and not direct also. It's, it's not direct LA. And you can see the material as well and the passion of the, of the people. And this is the kind of the lifestyle. This is the market of the Zuber. And this is the cul-de-sac, closed, okay? Different type of bread made and the social, sociable place and the cafe, they meeting each other and the work as well, uh, same here in the shop for the, uh, making uh, a rope, a rope, like Missy when that one in the World Cup now, okay? The third one is the city center of Basra, which is, uh, as you see, this is the Shat al-Arab and the, uh, the people go together on the so Shat al-Arab on the occasion every, every because the harsh climate, they go out every day, every night, and the marketing as well, okay? And the LA, the same one, is not direct. So it's, some features is the same. And the sociable together in the gardens and open space and the marketing and so on. And this is the canal of the Al-Ashar River in the, mid, uh, in the old Basra city. Now to get a conver conversion between them to the three built environment, to discover what is the difference between them. First, I want to start with the architectural style. I got three samples of the houses, which is totally different, as you see, different regarding to the uh, elevation, regarding to the uh, scale, Regarding to the plan itself, it's not showing in these pictures. Uh, regarding to the material and so on. As you see in the Mars, this is called Al Mudif, which is talk, we talked about it previously. And this is uh, as a reception one. It's not for all of them, they have this one. This is the biggest one. And for the rooms, it's different. But this is the biggest one for the boss of the tribe, Sheikh Al Ashira. That is, this is the post, uh, this is the sign. And the Basra city, as you see, uh, this is the Shanashil, as I said, and the style, this one, and in Zubair, which is, in Basra is two story, and Zubair is one story, mostly one story, a little bit two stories, and no windows on the wall, sold wall. And also on Mudif, there is no windows to the outside. That's according to the privacy. Uh, 
local materials, as we see in this picture, in Zubair, they use the mud, thick wall between 80 centimeters to 100, 200 centimeters to make adulation for the hot climate. On the Basra, they use the yellow bricks. On the uh, marsh, they use the bread and the wicker mat, as we said before. This is the, it's depend about what is available in their environment. Social interaction, most of the three of the, or most uh, of three of them, uh, local people, they have uh, sociable in Basra. However, there is a difference between one to one. So in the, in the north of the Basra, in the Mars, they are meeting together every morning to drink cafe and the coffee in the uh, Mudif that's happened at the morning and then discuss about the issue for their lifestyle. While in the city center, the people and the friends go together in the cafe on the street or in the uh, marketing. And in Zubair, there is a different thing. Uh, they are also getting together on the street and the social rubric. This is the pictures for the breakfast. It is on the first day on the Eid of Ramadan. After 30 day fasting, they start breakfast together after bray, Eid bray, at the morning. Everyone get his own dish from his house and put it all together on the street and sharing with the others. Traditional meal on the north of Basra and the marsh, the available is the fish, especially the small fish called sebras. Okay, and they uh, eat it either uh, fried or uh, grilled. As so, and that the city center dolma is the main meal, which is very famous. Dolma is related to the to the Uthman sometime. It's in all of the city of the Iraq. However, in Basra is different than the other city of the Iraq. In Baghdad, on other cities, they they do it. They make it sweetie while in Basra, they make it salt. So there is a difference. And on the Zubair, as we see in the, before in the pictures, at the, uh, the breakfast, they got uh, something is called masmuta. Masmuta is, you know it. Masmuta is fish, dry it under the sun for 10 to 14 days under the sun, and then go it as, Carry or the soup. Cake and the bread as well, different. As we said before, previously, the North do it by rice flour, make it together on the iron plate and do it, what's called uh, a siyah or called a tabak. On the city center, the kleja is the famous especially on the occasion for the Eid or the when someone visiting you. And the Kleja is, kleja is uh, also uh, lower, but it put it inside it, for example, uh, either uh, uh, date because the date is available or sometimes the statue or something like that. On the Zubair, they used uh, mud uh, fire tools and then this is the product of the nun. Transportation, totally different. The north of the Basra, Mars, they use the posts. And the posts is many kinds of the posts. Each, each farm, each tribe has his own style or our kind of the posts. And it's depend about the size, the shape, and so on. And also the boss of the tribe, the Sheikh al-Ashira, is it has he has a different kind of the uh, boss, which is very high and uh, with the uh, angle. On the city center, 
the wooding bus still existing now, working as well, still working now in the city center of the Basra, special. On the Zubair, the carriage uh, pulled by horses. Traditional crafts. North of the Basra marshes, because the valuable is, as we said, red and matte, uh, wicker mat. The women, as you see in these pictures, make some uh, basket, some dish, and so on. And they sell it to the tourists and sometimes sell it to the city center. On the city center, because the forest plum, palm there, there is the production of the date is the main craft or uh, valuable there. While in the Zubair, the traditional one was the slippers called a Zubair slippers or called Khraza. It was export to the other countries, especially Arabian Gulf countries, very famous. And you can search about it in Google. Uh, most of the Arabian Gulf countries import that one from a Zubair, which is not available now. Regarding customs, the city center is the modern. So the same everywhere on the world, in the globalization and so on. While in the north and west of the Basra, they use traditional uh, customs or traditional fashion, especially this, the head of the kofiya, it's called kofiya, cafe. But the difference, and also in Basra, but the difference in, 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 the, in the Mars, the cafe is white with a black spot. While in the, on the Zubair, the West, is the white with the red spot. It's different because it's totally different according to the culture. And as you know, the cafe is icon from Sumerian because Sumerian is, was working on the, as the fishers. And then when they get the fish, the fish net and they collect it together and put it in their house to protect them from the sun. So they try to borrow this and make this net. Childhood as well, different kind of childhood and uh, each one according to the uh, environment available there, the desert, the city center and the water with marshes. Now, the pinky dream is end and we reach the current situation, the sad story. This is the current situation of the Basra city nowadays. The heritage of the city center demolished. This is one in the city center and this one in the Zubair. Most of them demolished, okay. The Mars is dry, as you see in this picture. And the river and the canal, rubbish and sewage. And the contrast between the landscape, between the old and the new, and you can see the contrast. There is un no unity. The, the, the old one was harmony according to the material, according to the elements, according to the elevation, according to the skyline and so on. While on the ugly one on the modern <laughs> style is boxes, iron boxes. Why it's happening? Many challenges and threats leads to the current situation that we see above. The first one is the politics. Basra has passed from suffering from the wars. Men, three main wars. The first one with Iran, 1980 to 1988. Long time, eight years. During this eight years, Basra, Basra was under attack every day, under attack from bombing, cannons, and so on. And according to that, many building restrictions and demolished. The second 
is the security. The priority for the government during that time was for the security and the for, for the war. So there is no budget for rehabilitation, no budget for the maintenance and so on and the, the, for the heritage. The second, the third one is the immigration. As I said, during the eight years, most of the Basra city during, because the, for, of the bombing, most of the local people on the Basra city left it and go to the another cities looking for safe shelters. And some of them go to the another countries, especially for to the Kuwait and Saudi, because the family is overlapping between them. And most of the people who live in Basra at that time have three ID or two ID, Saudi ID, Kuwaiti ID, in addition to Iraqi ID. So during the war, because it's take long time, they left the city and go to the another countries and another cities. And because it's long time, eight years, so they start relationship, they, their children and son grow up there and get uh, social interaction with the others. So it was difficult for them to back again in 1988. And some of them who think about to get back to the Basra need, because the houses mostly demolished and uh, need rehabilitation and need maintenance. So they try to do it. And that's very short time, less than two years, then the invention of the Kuwait start again and the another war start again, which was worse than before. And after that, the United Nation sanctions would take also about 10 years and then 2003. So all of these make the people, local people, the original people not coming back to the Basra. The priority of the government, even after the war now, because everything is damaged during the war, the infrastructure and so on, there no electricity, no water supply, no sewage and so on. So the priority for the government, not to the heritage and so on. And also the legis legislation and the regulations is not working enough to protect the destruction and uh, to preserve the heritage building on the Basra city. And as well as the responsibility, there is overlapping between the responsibility from the central government and the local government. So there's sometimes there's the overlapping and according to this overlapping, each one said, I am not responsible about this building. The second challenge is economic factor. As I said, Basra is industrial center for Iraq. Most of the land of the Basra preserving for the oil, mostly. For the current one, current field and the future discovering field. So most of the land uh, preserving for the industry of the oil. And that, that make pressure to the city center itself because there is no land available for the people. And because the increasing of the population according to the immigration and according to the uh, normal increasing, okay? So there is, there is a need for new houses, for new uh, houses, and there is no uh, land available. So they go to the city center and we know that the traditional building and the heritage building always located at the city center. So they demolished it and built the towers for the, to accommodate the people there. Immigration as well. The, the first one was the immigration from Basra city to the another cities out, outside of the Basra. According to the economic, because Basra is attractive center because they're looking for the jobs, okay? So many people coming from other cities in Iraq find jobs in the ports, industrial or the oil and so on. And they are coming and they bring their family with them and they still in there. And when somebody coming to the new environment, he doesn't have any attachment with the place. He doesn't care about value and then not value, evaluate the value of that heritage building and heritage uh, elements. 
So they don't give attention to the, and they don't care about the heritage building. And according to that, many, nobody reject according to the destruction of the heritage building in the Basra Sea. And the reserved land, we talk about it. And also the land use, there is overlapping between the land use and the land use competition because the commercial and the housing, the commercial always win on this competition. So most of the heritage house is a houses and they demolish it to build a commercial center and mall and so on. The third challenge is the awareness, which is very important, which is missing, unfortunately, in the Basra city. Awareness for both, for the public and for decision makers. They don't have, uh, we need to raise the awareness for the people, especially for the a new generation, for the next generations, because they have disconnecting with the heritage because of the impact of the globalization and the media. So there is disconnecting with the heritage. They don't care about the heritage building. I don't, don't have any idea about their identity or their characters or something like that. Then the investment represent also a big challenge, especially for the few years ago. Many foreign company coming, because Basra is open, Iraq is open to the world now. Many com companies coming inside Basra and they do many projects, new projects for Basra, okay? And because they are foreign, they give, they bring their ideology with them and they don't care, I don't give enough any, uh, attention to the history of the city. They ignore the traditions of the city, they ignore the identity of the city, and they build their project according to their ideology. As we see, malls, hotels, housing, and other buildings, which is far from the soul of the city, far away from the soul of the city. This is the one, so we need to seat regulations. We need to seat a plan and regulations for the investment company and give the limitation for them when they start to build something on the city of the Basra. They should uh, take into consideration the history and the uh, traditions of the city. In addition to that, unfortunately, there is nobody invest investment on the, no investment project on the heritage. Uh, is missing nowadays so far. So there is a call to the investment sector to encourage and for the investment on the uh, heritage sector. All these challenges and all what I said and I, I present for the, uh, previously, give a question, how can we present how can, how can preservation is not enough we need to reviving documentation is not enough it's first step as okay but it's not enough then we have to preserve preserving something but the preservation as well is not enough to preserve building we need to reviving to re we need to get to create a soul inside this building and to, to recreate the traditions and norms and habits uh, of the basra city can we this is a challenge for us now today. And it's, we hope to, to, to preserve the remain heritage of the Basra before it's disappearing, but it's uh, fingered across. Finger across in Arabic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a, a brilliant uh, tour of the richness and variety of the tangible and intangible heritage of Basra. And it's a really heartbreaking and a timely reminder of what is being lost at such a rapid pace at the moment. And that's without talking about climate change and the, the emergency that Iraq is particularly exposed to and Basra um, especially. 
I can see that we have um, people asking questions on Zoom, but before I open that up, I wondered if anybody in the room would like to ask a question. Great, we have two, three hands up and we need a microphone so that um, people online can hear. So I'm gonna ask Zainab, if you don't mind to... What's the word? So I think, yes, this is, I think this one is working as well. So I'll use this one. If you'd like to introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Robert Stepanian. I'm a Mathis professor from London. <clears throat> um, I thank you very much, Dr. Hamid, for your brilliant presentation and the challenges of the history and heritage in Basra City. <clears throat> I would have liked to see some heritage issues Christian heritage issues in Basra, particularly I'm Armenian, so Armenian heritage and history uh, sites and how, because you know the, these are centuries old and, and these communities are now endangered in Basra, like the extinct uh, communities and their heritage, the Jewish communities, for example, yeah. before and now we, Armenians, I call them near extinct, uh, Christians in general, and the Armenians in particular. And I would have liked to see something about that and how uh, these uh, imp impacted on the cultural uh, aspects of uh, Basra. And also the second question is, uh, uh, isn't the role of the government and the university actually to, to, to mitigate some of the challenges mm -hmm. that we are facing in terms of the heritage and history in Basra city. So where, where is the role, including the local government? Basra, yeah. the income, uh, Basra is a rich city, such a rich city. So you have now the petrol dollar coming. Uh, so the question is that where, where is that money going toward keeping and preserving the heritage? And I think the university itself with the local government has a role in that to keep this, uh, you know, these sites in place for centuries for, for the next generations. Thank you very much. Thank you. A very interesting question. Do I actually just come a little bit this way so that the people online can see you? Thank you so much for the question. Yes, uh, for the Christian, I can't present everything about Basra. There is uh, a lot of uh, others, uh, uh, heritage and so on, items and so on. I can't present everything in the uh, 20 or uh, 30 minutes, but uh, there are many uh, uh, charge, ch church and Basra still existing nowadays and still working, and many uh, Christian heritage still uh, existing in Basra city as well. Houses, uh, chairs, and so on, and others, uh, uh, um, others public building for them, yeah. And uh, according to the, uh, regarding to the, your uh, second questions, yes, uh, we are sharing uh, the idea with the local government, with the university, of course, yeah. But as I said in my presentation, there is some priorities uh, for the government also. And there is a working now in the, in the some heritage building start working just uh, two years ago for some, uh, to preserve some heritage building on Basra, and, but there is no comprehensive plan for the heritage, for the future. So we, we are asking and the, we are uh, looking for comprehensive plan for the future uh, by step by step, and at least to, to start now to stop and to uh, prevent the destruction and the demolishing of the heritage building. Yeah, for example, uh, Maybe we can continue this conversation as a reception. I'd like to give some updates to accounts, ask questions, and we may pick up these same themes in a different period. But it's a really important question. Thank you. Uh, Ethan, thank you very much. That was a wonderful overview. And my question is just a very brief one, and that is regarding the current position in the marshes. My understanding was, and I may well be wrong, but it was that they had been drained or a large part of them had been drained under the previous regime, 
but that they were being flooded again. Is that what's happening? They flooded again and then got uh, this done now, uh, nowadays. Just a few months, it's, it's get down. It's, it's fluctuated. Sometimes got up and sometimes got down. Yeah. But now, just a few, two months ago, uh, there's no water on the, on, the, on the Mars, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> this is Ali Al-Makhzoumi uh, from Baghdad. Um, thank you, Dr. Hamid, for uh, the presentation. And I think you were a bit harsh on Basra today. How? How? Because, um, I don't know, Dinia Basra, you have heard about this, right? Yeah. Basra is, uh, is the word. This was the people of the Gulf mentioning Basra. It means when it's um, uh, luxurious and the life is, uh, yeah. is good. And I think Basra now, it, it's reviving, especially the last three, two years. Um, you just show, unfortunately, old photos. Um, uh, uh, you, the, even the current situation slide was talking about Basra like 15 years ago, in the middle of the war. but not the case anymore today we have uh, uh, very uh, uh, very uh, very good practices in basra maybe not only on cultural heritage uh, but an uh, uh, economy and it's like one of the good governorates uh, uh, even the governor is one of the one of the best is doing for his city i'm not here supporting anyone but just giving an example um for example, even for the cultural heritage, the UNESCO project in Old Basra, the Mr. Qahtan efforts with the Basra Museum uh, the last five, seven years. Um, so I think even the photos use all, all photos. I mentioned this, but for example, you can see uh, Visit Basra is on Instagram, a page that uh, 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 young people, they did to just show the real Basra today how Basra look like today. Uh, beautiful buildings, good constructions, even the, the, the newest hotel, the chain from Millennium is in Basra, even not in Baghdad. So I think you were a bit harsh. And you were asking about, uh, will we change this? I think, and all, will we raise awareness? I think if, if the young generation will take part, will take uh, uh, control, maybe yes, because the young generation they show us, they showed us a great uh, uh, example only six months ago when the Gulf Cup was hosted in Basra, and uh, 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 also universities. And you are from university. You should contribute an awareness. You not ask for awareness, right? So this is my uh, comment. And uh, yeah, I sorry, I, I just couldn't no, keep you. silence, you know. Thank you. Uh, because also uh, uh, Basra is one of the. Uh, uh, main destinations for tourism. I work in tourism. I bring people to Basra. Uh, we eat delicious food. Even you, you didn't mention the two delicious main meals. You know, Tabba Grobian, the shrooms. Yeah, yeah. You didn't mention it. Come on. And Zbedi. And... I can't so, mention all, all I know, of course. <laughs> and yes, also the cultural diversity, the Christians and Sabian Mandayan yes. and the Jewish and yeah. All of this legacy, all of this uh, heritage of Basra, unfortunately, was skipped or maybe forgotten. Or I hope no, not. no, it's not forgotten. But I can't include all of them. Hundred percent. I, I focus on the on the three part of the Basra. This is the the, yeah, the fox. What uh, the, the the plan for my uh, presentation? And, and uh, thank you so much. No, for, no, thank for you. Your of course. Uh, yes, exactly. There is a development of the city of the Basra. Of, of course, yes. But I talk about the heritage sector. Yes. I talk, I am focusing this presentation, focusing just for the heritage sector. And for the new building, yes, there is new building, but it is respect the history of the city. You, I show some of the investment right. project. Yeah. Even in this, Matthaf al Hassoun, for example, a good example. Yes, sorry. Yeah, of course, of course. I'm just, yeah, I just couldn't stop. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, 
Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. The, the, because the subject is, is so important, this uh, um, awareness of heritage, and it's not limited to Basra. It's the whole of Iraq mm -hmm. is full of heritage. Yes. And the annoying thing is, is the awareness of people in heritage. Everybody talks about, oh, we are, well, our heritage is Sumerian and Babylonian, and, but they don't even understand what that means in a lot of cases. In a lot of cases, the museum in Baghdad open doesn't open over the weekends. It's only now they started opening on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, in Najaf, there is the um, um, the heritage, the, the Najaf Museum. Nobody even heard of it, and it's there in the middle of the town. Hardly anybody goes there. You go to the museums, and there is hardly any printed material to tell you what is there. I mean, it it is very sad, and we need hard work really to make that awareness look at Rashid Street look at Baghdad look at I mean the, the construction yes the, the guy talking about the co construction and looking at you know the new architecture the new uh, the, the young people are yeah. very active and what have you but when it comes to actually awareness of the heritage I find it very disturbing thanks thank you so much thank you yeah, no, I totally I agree with you. I agree with him. Yes, I think we all do. <laughs> we all do. And of course, one of the reasons for the uh, network is to precisely to arrange, not only to raise awareness, but to start to make a difference. And that's, we are in one probability for all of us, yes. With Dr. Hamid and um, Dr. Sora and Professor Claudia um, on, well, we hopefully have some news to share with you soon. On um, a bigger, a bigger thing that will we hope will start to make a difference. But let us turn to the questions online. <laughs> um, okay, so we Ali, thank um, Dr. Ali Nadi Atia has asked about Christian community. I think we've talked about already. So he also asked, could the coexistence of different people is the key to have the power of diversity is there any sign of um coexistence of diverse communities in the past and in the present so um any sign of that I yeah the past the, and the the coexistence of different communities you talked about immigration yeah, yes. immigrant communities integrating no I, I told you as i said there is a yes maybe they are engaged with the with the people but they don't understand the value of the heritage. I, I talk about this point. Yeah, the, the people in Basra, local people, is uh, the hospitality of the Basra people is, uh, is, is, is high, and they welcoming each of all, mm -hmm. all of them. But and the important thing I am uh, worrying about is the value of the heritage of the Basra. So, for example, when somebody coming from and there's some of them occupied. Some traditional house because after 2003 there was no uh, law and so on. So many of the uh, heritage houses uh, occupied illegally by the people coming from outside or some of them from Basra city. And when they live in the uh, on such houses on such building, they don't uh, evaluate it and they don't care about the element and so on. And there is many many pictures. And I can show about this, for example, how can a treat or deal with the Shana shield, how can deal with the another elements and so on. Thank you. So we also have two people who would like to ask their questions live online. Thank you for waiting. I hope this will work. We haven't tested this. So um, Rafa, would you like to um, um, ask your question? Yes. Perfect. We can hear Good afternoon you. for all. Do you hear me? Yes. Perfectly. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm so interested with your uh, research, but I feel like you annoyed me because I'm a member of the minorities and there is no mention to us. I don't know 
if it is on purpose or you missed us and which has annoyed me a lot that uh, um, last picture you showed me a picture with two hands of an old woman with a ring a golden ring who made it for her i ask you only and my colleagues they asked you about the other minorities or the other combination in basra there are many um, groups in basra it's not only for one group but <laughs> i don't know why you showed us only one side and basra has many um, diversity and it's it begins from the ancient eras it begins from the sumerian eras and that al masmuta you um, showed it or you noticed it it's from the sumerian and i noticed that you don't mention them you don't i don't know why maybe you forget them and there is no mention to the um, jewish people and they are shanashil and they are a very um, perfect uh, engraving and you know uh, they are rich at that time they were very rich and they have their um, buildings and they are churches and also the churches the old churches of the christian they are from the uh, 405 maybe in basra and there there is no any uh, uh, name for them so my question is where do we care for each other and when when do we love each other and don't forget each other every moment it's my pleasure to be within uh, within uh, uh, everyone it's my pleasure to be in love between us and don't forget each other and thank you so much you are very uh, uh, perfect to expose your ideas thank you so much thank you so much Rafa. Uh, yeah. excuse me Rafa. Uh, there is a limitation for the presentation and limitation of the time yeah and yeah. i can't include all of the basra basra is deserved more and more of course yes it's needed yeah. hours and hours to talk about each part and each uh, kind and each group on the for the city exactly so there is a limitation for the times and yeah. that's why i focus about just the three natural built environment in basra city and according to the natural and built environment i present what is the wearing what is they eating and so yeah. on and the eating and wearing is not related to the groups than the other not to the other group christian jewish muslims and all, uh, all of them they eat from the same one so it's for all of us dolma for all of us yeah okay and yeah that's what so, that's yeah. what we want to hear yeah yeah so we from that aspect, where obviously this is a really complicated and important question. Um, we have some other uh, people. So, Rafa, I'm going to um, ask Dr. Dilshad to speak now. Thank you so much for your contribution. And I love this idea of Thank you. the importance of loving each other and that we really need to hold to that as well. Um, and um, Dr. Dilshad, please, would you like to ask your question? Uh, yes. Good afternoon. Hello, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. 
Many thanks to Nahrain Network and PC and to Professor Eleanor and Dr. Hamid uh, to this uh, seminar and a good presentation. I see it uh, to share it uh, by Dr. Hamid. My question about the, the impact of oil when the discovered in the Basra in the second half of the 23rd or uh, I said the negative impact uh, 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 if you wanted to explain by the, the Arabic, my question to, to Dr. Hamid. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Dr. Hamid. I will answer you a question about the effects of the effect 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 السلبي على التراث في البصرة ونحن نعرف واقع بصرة وواقع المت... Hello. Finish. Finish your question for Mr. Tashad. Available this question. Thank you so much. I I, I mentioned uh, one aspect for the for the. Uh, for the impact, bad impact on the negative impact of the oil uh, discovering for the Basra heritage, as I mentioned before, uh, previously. I mentioned that the uh, uh, land, most of the land of the city of the Basra nowadays is uh, preserving for the oil industry and for the future oil industry as well. So that's make a comparison and uh, to the city center itself, because there is no expansion as much as more. In addition to the another, for example, pollutions, another, for example, foreign who coming to the city to work on this company, uh, mm -hmm. working on the Basra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the, the bad in uh, our negative impact of the. Uh, uh, oil industry of the Basra city and on the heritage sector itself. There is, of course, there is another uh, bad impact, uh, uh, for the example, for the pollution, for the uh, uh, cancers, for any, uh, another thing. But we focus now on the heritage uh, sector at, itself. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamid. Yeah. I see we still have more questions. But we also have, we've been talking, we've been making you work for an hour and a half already. Yeah. So I think it's time for us to start to end the formal part of the day. And I'm very sorry to people that still have questions online. People who are in the room with us and still have questions, we will have a chance for some more informal chat over refreshments. Before I hand over to Dr. Paul Collins to give the, our formal thanks, um, to Dr. Hamid, I have some thanks to make as well. Um, to Anne-Marie Moscone from uh, the Visiting Scholars Coordinator from BC, who is just absolutely wonderful and looks after yeah. all of our scholars so well. Anne-Marie, I know you're online. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for Annie. Um, uh, Zainab uh, Mahdi, um, Mahia Kardam, Oana Bali, who are the team around me at UCL that do 95% of the work um, and make everything happen. So a huge thank you for, for you, not just for tonight, but um, for everything. And then of course, thanks to Paul as well, uh, my, uh, one of my co-directors for also just being, yeah, guiding light from right from the beginning and before. So I'm going to ask you Paul to come and um, express our, our gratitude on behalf of everybody. Thank you, Eleanor, very much indeed. Uh, Dr. Hamid, uh, it was a, a really brilliant talk. It, um, I first went to Basra in 2008 and have been going back quite regularly since then. And um, seeing all your images uh, reminded me so much of wonderful times, uh, wonderful food, certainly, mm -hmm. but also wonderful friends. And I think um, as Chair of the British Institute for the Study of Iraq. It's wonderful to be combined with the Nahrain Network um, to create this Visiting Scholars Network. 
uh, a network of friends, certainly, but a, a network that enables the sorts of conversations and local expertise that, that you bring um, to the wider world. Um, so to raise the very awareness that you're talking about. Certainly, there are enormous challenges to face, but the whole idea, I think, of the, the networks that are being created is to root those challenges and the solutions to those challenges in the expertise of local people. And you're demonstrating that um, so very clearly. So um, my enormous thanks to you for this, this you wonderful so lecture. And we look forward to future collaboration and work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope so. Hope so. Thank you so much. And let me, um, just to end, as uh, Professor Eleanor said, we'd like to present you where we started in many ways with this uh, conference in 2016 in Basra, um, where um, we began to think about some of those stories and complex stories that have um, been nice. told in that sense. Thank you. Very Thank good. you so much. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Just say goodbye to our friends online. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, and I'm sorry we couldn't uh, take every question. Um, the recording will make we we'll need to do some little edits to the recording, and then it will av be available fairly soon. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Mehia has recorded a podcast um, with Dr. Hamid, and that will be out soon as well. So lots more opportunities to think about this uh, this topic. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll join uh, again soon for another event. I'm not sure what it'll be yet, but there will be one. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>